stop eating those breadcrumbs, Gretel. We are headed to the forest. Black Forest Labs has dropped the long-awaited, much-anticipated Flux 2. Did Black Forest cook, or is Hansel still a little chewy? Come on, they're a German company. It was either that or, like, chocolate and schnitzel jokes. Plus, a new open-source video model. Hunyan releases Hunyan Video 1.5. And, well, I mean, on the plus side, this one you don't need a $20,000 GPU to run. Plus, since last week's onslaught of Google News is finally quelled, I've got a look at a new image editor coming to challenge the banana throne. All that plus a look at a new mystery AI video model. Kicking off, Black Forest Labs have released Flux 2. And backtracking just very briefly, for a quick timeline, it was back in August of 2024 that Black Forest Labs first released Flux 1. In November of 2024, we got Flux tools uh, with like fill, like in painting essentially depth and canny. And finally, in May of 2025, they dropped Flux Context, which was the image editing tool. And that brings us to today with the release of Flux 2. Flux 2 is flexing the ability to produce realistic images and details up to four megapixels, including accurate hands, feet, fabric, logos, and small objects. Two interesting aspects that they're noting with Flux 2 is that, uh, well, you're able to prompt in JSON with the model. Um, I, I mean, you can kind of do it in like any image or video model, uh, but I guess Black Forest Labs is saying, you know, it might be optimized to do so. And secondly, that it can understand and recreate hex colors, which I'm sure most of you are aware of. If not, it's basically just a six digit code that represents a color commonly used by designers and developers. Additionally, Flux 2 has significantly more real world knowledge and lighting and spatial logic. Flux 2 is coming in with a few different flavors. We of course have Flux 2 Pro, uh, the Flex version, the dev version, Klein, which is coming soon. This will be the uh, open source version of it. And then VAE, which is actually available now over on Hugging Face. As for where it's available, well, a whole bunch of places, and that's just at launch. Uh, being, you know, Flux, it, it will pretty much be everywhere by the end of the week. So kicking off with some tests over on Flux Playground, we will, of course, check in with our man in the blue business suit, who we last saw at Area 51 in a warehouse. So apparently he's opened up some kind of mystery crate, which you definitely should not do when you're in Area 51. Uh, overall, pretty solid image. It did give us everything I asked for. Our wolf buddy is back here. We do have actually some really nice kind of like dust moating happening in the glow here. Uh, man in the blue business suit looks pretty good. Actually, textures on the suit look very nice. Lighting on his face actually looks really good. And I, I do have to note that the uh, skin texture actually has improved a considerable amount. It definitely does not have that waxy look to it. What's this? It looks like our man in the blue business suit is being teleported somewhere. Well, he's off to his next adventure and I'm sure he'll catch up with his wolf at some point. Older test here of an astronaut drinking coffee outside of a Parisian cafe with a group of people gesturing towards him uh, and someone in the back with a character. Overall, a pretty impressive image. Flux 2 definitely flexing its ability to generate hands. I don't see a lot of like hand wonk here. Some really nice details in the reflection of the visor there, although I do have to point out that it does miss the handle on the coffee cup and even brings up uh, the saucer as well. That said, I'm going to let that slide because my man is double fist in there and that is an astronaut after my own heart. Moving on to a pirate theme test. This is a pretty wild night at the Pirate Tavern. Uh, definitely a lot to like in this image. It's for sure crammed with a lot of details uh, down to these two guys back here, which look, you might call AI image wonk, but at the same time, I mean, I'm not judging. I have no idea how hard these pirates are going. Now, one thing I've definitely noticed in these early tests with Flux 2 is that it, it does have this tendency to lean into sort of an illustrated style. That said, I have discovered that you can kind of like trick your way out of that. Uh, for example, this is a prompt that I've run a couple of times on the channel in the past, so like a you know, Fallout inspired vault dweller. Um, definitely leaning into kind of that unreal video game graphic look here, but by providing an image reference, in this case, a mid-journey generated image with the same prompt, we end up with this, which does look significantly better. It actually even retains the character from our input image, which we're going to take a look at in just one second. So overall, I have to say, at least in these early tests for, you know, the aesthetics that I tend to go for, which is like, you know, FBI agent drinking coffee in a Pacific Northwest diner, Flux 2 does seem to do a lot better when I provide it with reference images. Uh, for example, on the left here is the uh, a mid journey image reference. And on the right uh, is the Flux 2 output. Two coffee cups again, man. I will say this about Flux 2 is that it definitely likes its coffee. 
That said, I am pretty impressed with the character consistency from image referencing. Uh, once again, our mid-journey reference image and now our FBI agent standing outside in the rain of the diner, um, working on his third cup of coffee, I presume. Um, but yeah, I mean, not a lot of details in our uh, reference image character here. He's definitely very heavily shadowed on the one side, but um, you know, still managed to basically pull off a pretty reasonable facsimile of him uh, in our Flux 2 image. Moving on to some multi-reference tests. Uh, I ended up taking these two characters and this location, which yes, we did run in Nano Banana Pro last week. We'll take a look at that. I'm not gonna get too crazy about like a Flux 2 versus Nano Banana Pro thing. They're two different models, they do different things. So the result in Flux 2 ended up coming out looking like this, which I don't know, it looks pretty good in my opinion. Uh, the characters definitely look like they are present within the location. Um, contrasting that with Nano Banana Pro, which ended up coming out like this, which I do think looks good. Uh, Nano Banana Pro definitely maintained like the color balance of the location, whereas Flux 2 sort of switched it up. That said, the Nano Banana Pro version uh, kind of ends up, uh, to me at least, like the characters look a lot more like copy pasted in. I do feel that the character retention is a little bit better in Flux 2. Now I do have to admit that we did end up with a third arm in one of the Flux 2 generations, but I mean, kind of like uh, the pirates having a wild night earlier in the video, it, it kind of brought me a little bit of joy seeing that again. Uh, that said, again, very simple fix of an edit and just prompting remove the man's third arm. And in terms of my great white whale of arcing the camera around to the opposite side of the room and breaking the 180 degree rule. Um, Flux 2 almost gets it. Um, we definitely do see the you know opposite side of the room here. I mean, hypothetically, at least we don't know what it looks like. So the model is making all of this up. Uh, but we have seen in the past with, you know, Nano Banana 1 outputs, you know, normally we would just see the same background repeated. Although that said, it did not manage to specifically break the 180 rule, which I did prompt out for. Um, indeed, our man st is still standing on the left and our woman on the right. Contrasting that with the Nano Banana version of that same test, you know, overall I do feel that Nano Banana just kind of does have a better understanding of the space, uh, considering we get this like table in both outputs. Uh, and indeed, again, the banana did manage to, you know, flip both characters around, breaking the 180 degree rule. That said, with multi-image referencing, and again, I'm not trying to do like a flux versus nano banana thing, but um, you know, when doing a multi-image reference, taking one canvas and three images, providing that as one image reference, um, you know, flux ended up with this, which I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Um, and at least aesthetically to my taste is like a little bit better, again, to me than the nano banana version of that same output. Moving on to some community outputs, friend of the channel, Brent Lynch gives us this, you know, 40s noir detective scene. Uh, I always love how every like image and video model puts cigarette smoke in inappropriate places. Like in this case, like did that lady just like throw a lit cigarette down on the floor? I mean, there's an ashtray right there. Alex Genie Media showcases, I mean, honestly, it's a pretty simple edit. It's just, you know, changing the woman so that she's wearing a red dress. Um, but you know, all other details do look remain fixed. I, you know, these are those little simple things that I go back to from time to time, just, just to sort to check yourself and remember like like a few years ago this would have taken hours and heather cooper gives us this nice photographic lighthouse image uh nice details in here 35 millimeter grain some scratching a uh, nice light bloom on the lighthouse itself so overall coming out of the gate i'd have to say that flux 2 i mean it's off to a very promising start obviously there's going to be a lot of nano banana pro comparisons it killed it did not kill etc etc but ultimately i don't think that that's the right way to look at it they are two different models they, they share a lot of overlap in terms of what they do but one of them is open source which is going to lead to a whole bevy of tinkering uh, to push it into all kinds of different directions so obviously i'm going to keep playing around with flux 2 to find out where its strengths are in the meantime i mean it's just great to have black forest labs and flux back it's always good to have options Moving on, we do have a new open source video model, uh, Hunyan Video 1.5. So this one actually dropped last week. I just didn't get the chance to cover it. It kind of got missed in the, under the crush of Google News. Uh, but yeah, it is a lightweight video generation model, text to video and image to video. And requirements wise, it's just an NVIDIA GPU with uh, 14 gigs of GPU memory. So you know, actually pretty reasonable. It is capable of generating lengths of five to 10 seconds at 480, 720, and with super resolution up to 1080. Now you aren't gonna be doing that on your 14 gig card. 
Now, admittedly, I haven't actually gotten a chance to test this one, mostly because I've been busy testing something for next week, but it is a video model that is available locally and actually over on Comfy Cloud as well. Um, yeah, I am actually starting to dip my toes into Comfy Cloud and hopefully I'll have a, you know, kind of beginner's guide to using that coming up pretty soon. So again, I do apologize for not getting a chance to do a full deep dive into this model, but, you know, at the same time with so much going on, I, I definitely wanted to make sure that it got mentioned here. Uh, link to Hoon One, one 1.5 is down below. Moving on, it looks like if there is a challenger coming up to the Nano Banana Throne, it's coming from ByteDance. This one spotted by BD Squilez or uh, Blue Dragon, possibly. Um, yeah, essentially, you know, Sea Dream has a mysterious model called Lab, uh, which is essentially doing the banana thing. So in a prompt shootout, here is the Nano Banana output, followed by the Sea Dream Lab output. Now, in terms of an advantage, the C Dream model outputs at a native 2K, so its default is high res. And additionally, the lab model can generate up to four images at once. So uh, in this case, this is like a retexture. Uh, our input images here, Nano Banana here, and then these two are the new Bite Dance model. Additionally, it does pretty good in terms of input pose reference. Uh, here is a pose that all of us, all of us sit in all the time because that is a perfectly natural, comfortable position to sit in. Nano Banana Pro returns with this. And the new bite dance model returns with this and with this. Um, so I think the real advantage here is, you know, the multiple outputs. So currently this model is only available in China. It is not available on Dreamina, which is uh, ByteDance's Western platform essentially. But from what I've seen, stuff eventually does release on the Dreamina platform. So I'll keep an eye out for this one and let you know when it's available for everyone. Finally, rounding out, we have a new AI video mystery model that's been popping up in the artificial analysis arena. This one is called Whisper Thunder. And I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't really know much about it other than the fact that it's been popping up and it looks pretty good. One thing I noticed about the model is that it does a pretty good job with these like panning track shots. Um, yeah, I mean, everything here looks pretty good. The outputs are coming in at 7.20, around five seconds. This was a bit of a strange prompt of a man made of butter begins to melt in a kitchen. I don't pick the prompts. They just kind of show up on uh, the artificial analysis leaderboard. But, you know, overall, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Again, five second output. I, I don't know if that's like the maximum for this model. This text to video output really impressed me. Some band playing in a subway station. My guy there playing like a full acoustic kit. That's what everybody wants to hear when, you know, they're on their way to or coming home from work is a drummer playing a full kit in you know a subway station um but yeah there's a lot that is actually pretty good here including like that guy in the trench coat that walks by in the beginning essentially there's a lot of chance there's a good amount of chances there for things to occlude vanish morph whatever and yeah i mean it stays pretty rock solid and by rock solid i do mean unlike the beat of that drummer so I'll keep an eye out on this one. I'll definitely let you know when we know what Whisper Thunder is. In the meantime, I just presume that it's the name of that band playing in the subway. So that's it for today. I'm not sure if I'm going to get another video out this week, considering that it's the, the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, that said, I do have something cooking up. It's pretty cool coming up next week. So uh, if we don't see each other before then, as always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.